All right. Um, can you give a brief background of your education, please? Well, it's easy. Uh, all my degrees are from U of T. So I did uh, undergraduate, actually, everything. I did my, I've been, I'm born in Toronto. Mm -hmm. So all my schooling is in Toronto, elementary, public school. Um, actually, went to East York Collegiate for those of you who uh, come from Toronto. Um, I went to U of T, did an undergraduate bachelor's in electrical engineering there, and then I went on and did a master's in electrical engineering, and then I continued to do a PhD in electrical engineering. All right. Uh, what made you pursue a research path in life? Any advice for those who want to follow in your footsteps? Uh, well, I spent a lot of years in grad school, and research kind of got ingrained in me. I always loved investigating things and figuring out how things work and all that. And uh, I realized I didn't want to work right away coming out of school. I thought, you know, let's go to grad school and do some more research there. And I uh, thought it was, you know, great experience. Uh, what do I suggest to people who want to pursue a path in research? Well, you got to have an inquisitive mind. If you want to know how things work and want to figure out alternate, you know, um, methods or techniques to solving a problem, research is the way to go. All right. <clears throat> Um, can you give a summary of what your research is and what you're currently working on? I am an image processing uh, researcher, so anything digital image processing. I mean, the easy, um, higher level view of that is uh, if you wondered how Photoshop works, mm. everything in Photoshop, or a big part of that, is um, it's all about image processing. It's all signal processing theory applied to images, and uh, it's not just a simple package created by some bunch of guys that thought let's fix some images up. I mean mm -hmm. the people who created that were electrical engineers primarily and it's based on a lot of research that comes out of the field that I'm involved in. Uh, currently I am doing uh, two things I've been focusing on recently. One is a high dynamic range imaging. Uh, for those who don't know high dynamic range allows you to take multiple exposures uh, of a scene and you merge them together to get a perfectly exposed uh, image because sometimes part of your image might be overexposed or underexposed mm -hmm. and it's great to come up with algorithms that can do that efficiently after you've taken multiple shots. Mm -hmm. So do, are there any problems with the current research? Uh, there's problems with every type of research. There is no research that doesn't have problems. That's part of research. If there were no problems, we wouldn't be sitting here. Mm -hmm. So there's problems all the time and the deeper you dig into something, the more you look into it, the more you realize that there's a lot of problems there. Hmm. So uh, current problems are uh, in high dynamic range is coming up with an efficient way of or an effective way of merging different exposures to get a really good looking image. Um, other things that we research are uh, super resolution. So you want to take a small image or a video and blow it up to a huge size. That requires a lot of signal analysis and uh, image analysis to come up with the information that goes in between. I could go on and on the amount of problems that could come up with that to get a very high resolution, perfect image from a small one. So those are the typical types of research things that I'm currently working on. It's a huge range. I've worked on 3D in the past. I did 2D to 3D conversion. Um, anything that has to do with uh, 3D cinema, stuff like that has been part of my research in the past. Um, and looking forward, things that deal with uh, taking AI or machine learning, whatever you want to call that, and apply that to things like super resolution or HDR or even depth from 3D images. Um, it's kind of the thing now is to try put AI and come up with better solutions to that stuff. Mm -hmm. So what do you aim to gain from your research? Um, I aim to gain students that can work through there. I mean, uh, I don't do the research to make myself feel better. I think the goal of a researcher and a professor is to progress in the area, but at the same time you do that with graduate students. Um, that's part of being a professor here. We bring in students, we teach them how to do research, we have them investigate an area. So my goal is to, um, to nurture and, you know, create um, better researchers. Will it push my agenda forward? I like being involved in the research to my certain degree. I like going to conferences and seeing what other people are doing, disseminate and exchange information, and that's that's what I want out of my research. Primarily to bring students in and have them, you know, continue that on in their own. Yep. So do you have any advice you'd give to students if they want to pursue a similar research path? Well, um, well you got to do grad school. Okay, so I would suggest to students, if they're thinking of things like grad school, they should do maybe a summer research uh, assistantship with the department, or you can 
approach professors directly and ask them if they had stuff for you to do in the summer. Um, but you know, you you need to do grad school. Obviously, you want to do research. So the first steps of that, or the first taste of that, can be done in the summer. Smaller projects. Um, then, if you have the aptitude, and you have, if you have the aptitude, the will, the um, you know, you can apply for grad school. That's that's the number one way. And uh, you know, within a two-year time frame in a grad school, you can do quite a bit of you know worthwhile research, get a bigger taste for it, and it'll better prepare you for the job market today. Mm -hmm. So, what is the most rewarding part of research? Uh, let's see. Uh, you know, seeing seeing my graduate students actually solve an aspect of the problem they've identified they want to work on. Once you see a student spend you know months researching something and then have a breakthrough and get results and publish them and present them at a conference, that's a big highlight. I mean, and you know, I don't just say that because I'm a prof and I want to make students feel good. I mean, that's the reality of it. I'm a mentor to my graduate students, and when I see them succeeding and they're actually enjoying something, it makes me feel great. Then the next step, when I see them get jobs at like some pretty successful companies and get good positions, that makes me feel great that they're actually doing something with that and they're, you know, going out in the world and continuing that. That's that to me is a is a great thing. Okay, um, are you currently looking for teachers' assistants or have any summer research positions for students? Uh, teaching assistants mean like graduate students. Yes, I'm always looking for graduate students. Uh, all professors here are always looking for graduate students. So graduate students that are interested in working in image processing, multimedia, uh, signal processing applications, um, or the topics I talked about and things like that, computer vision, or artificial intelligence, I'm willing to speak to them. Um, what was the second part of that question? Um, do you have any research, summer, uh, summer yeah, research and positions? Yeah, always summer research stuff. Uh, I do stuff on my own, as some profs do, but we also have a summer research program here at the department that we advertise uh, probably in the next month or so where we'll be advertising where professors will post their summer research projects and students mm -hmm. apply and they you know they get paid it's not you're not going to become rich by doing the summer thing with us but it'll give you a small taste and indication of the kind of research I want to do and others in this department okay um, if a student is interested in getting in contact with you how should he or she he or she go about doing that easy to email that's it Okay. Um, what advice do you, what advice would you give to students that lose motivation? Um, losing motivation is a constant thing in life. So you just got to work through things. Sometimes the best thing is take a break for a bit. Maybe if that's an hour or a day or a week, get away from something. You come back to it. Usually you're refreshed and that time away makes you think about it. And you, sometimes you solve the problem when you're away or you think about, Hey, maybe I should try this aspect yeah. or, you know, it, it just, you just need to get away sometimes, but you got to work through it. That's really the uh, most important thing. I mean, any student in engineering should understand that you just got to work through everything. Coursework is hard. That'll demotivate you. You just got to keep going because there's a light at the end of the tunnel, and that light isn't a train. I mean, it's, you know, it's the exit, and there is something beyond that. So when I'm demotivated, I just, I, I just kind of like put my head down and try to work through it. If that doesn't do it, I take a break, and then I come back to it. Okay, well, that's the end. Thank you so much, Professor. All right, thanks for uh, meeting with me today.